Yes, finally, after all this time, it is possible. I found out a way to beat Queen Elizabeth Meta in Azure Lane. Queen Elizabeth Meta, or QE Meta for short, is the most difficult meta boss so far. It took me a ridiculously long time to figure out how to actually beat her, and I got to the point where I almost decided to look it up. But I didn't because I wanted to beat her on my own with no external help, as I usually do with these bosses. The most important part of beating this boss is knowledge, knowing how to beat her, knowing how she works, what she does. So let's start with some of the information that we have available. The first thing you can observe about QE Meta is the fact that she is a battleship, just like her normal counterpart, as all the metas are. I don't know why I said that, but you know. But more importantly, she is heavy armored, as we can see here. What's so great about heavy armor, you ask? <laughs> well, just like pretty much every other heavy meta boss battle, we know exactly how to beat her now. Well, relatively. We know the comp that we need to use. Just like Arizona meta, QE meta is a heavy armored battleship. What counters heavy armored battleships? Torpedoes. What do five out of the six ships in this fleet do? Torpedoes. And, as we all know, Helena's radar scan is perfectly balanced, and absolutely doesn't break every single boss battle in this game. This was my original Arc Royale meta loadout. Now, I actually changed this after I recorded all of the footage, but this is the loadout you'll see in the recordings. I'll show off a better setup after this. The main thing to note here is I use the Barracuda, even though it's not that great of a plane, because it has such a low reload time and you absolutely need Arc Royale Meta's airstrike to be the first one to be launched. I'll tell you guys why that's important later. This is my new preferred loadout for Arc Royale Meta. I use the Iron Blood Torpedo Bombers because they have a way lower preparation time than Ryusei's, which also lets me swap out the Barracuda for the Fairy Firefly, this is the only other dive bomber that has a low enough preparation time to be used to make sure that her airstrike is the first one. And since her airstrike is the first one, the scepter for the first strike aviation buff is required. To give me a better chance at beating QE meta, I went all out with my upgrades for both Shinano and Hakuryu. So all the resets are plus 13. I have two Tenrais, each ultra rare carrier has one. And I finally decide to upgrade the Steam Catapult and the Homing Beacon that they each have. And of course Scepter, just for aviation. Hunting Bow isn't that useful here, mostly because QE Meta doesn't spawn any aircraft. And if you didn't catch what I was saying, Hakuryu's loadout is literally a clone of Shinano's. Like, actually a clone. So there you go. Shimakaze's loadout. Unlike Arizona Meta, I actually had to change her loadout just for this fight. It's a little annoying, but had to be done to fit the needs. I also used a slightly different loadout for most of my recording, but now I'm using the Royal Navy Quintuple Torpedoes mostly because they fire in a straight line. For a while I was using the homing torpedoes, but I realized these don't do as much damage, and honestly, in this fight you have way more opportunities to hit a straight spread of torpedoes dealing an insane amount of damage, unlike the other fights. The only other thing that's different in this loadout is the Celestial Body. I basically just have this because it gives an insane amount of HP. Normally I would use an Oxygen Torpedo, but I have Shimakaze in the front position. There's a very specific reason for this too. And finally, I also have Goldburn, as I always have had on her, for extra reload. Next up, the only reason we're able to beat QE Meta, aka Helena, one of the most overpowered characters in the game. And for this fight, this is my standard loadout. Royal Navy Ultra Rare Cruiser Gun, because it's the most powerful cruiser gun in the game. And then the Iris Libre Destroyer Gun Secondary. This is just because it does high explosive damage, and maybe that helps deal a bit more damage. I'm not entirely sure. It was kind of just hope to maybe Helmet does a bit more damage than she really should. Elite Damage Control for more survivability. This is always what I have on Helena. And also HP HSG for more evasion and more survivability. But now you may be wondering, where's the SG radar that you usually put on Helena? Well, I would have that on her. However, if you do give her an SG radar, it changes the timing of her radar scan skill, which can actually mess this entire run up. 
I mean, I know 4 seconds doesn't sound like a lot, but if the radar scan was 4 seconds earlier, that means most of the aircraft carrier's airstrike attacks would actually miss the window of the radar scan skill. So yeah, keep that in mind. Hazagumo. We pretty much just have her for her air raid assistance skill, but she does provide a little bit of other utility through some torpedo damage, but more importantly, the Beaver Squad tag. This basically just increases your fleet's speed. It also gives her some extra survivability, which isn't really needed considering she's in the backmost position. And honestly, there's not much to say past that. The oxygen torpedo is just for damage because she doesn't need another survivability item. I don't know why I put fleets first in this recording, but now we'll get to the information. What I would normally do is look at the actual information tab in the meta showdown menu, but one of the guild members posted this in the Discord, showing off all the specifics. Now to me, this is infinitely more useful than the information tab because now I know all the numbers. And I like numbers. The second line is the meta affinity skill, where QE meta does less damage to meta ships and takes more damage from meta ships. However, this means squat, because in my opinion, meta ships suck. Every single one of them. They're pretty much just transitional ships until you get better ships for Operation Siren and stuff like that. They aren't, you know, S plus tier. Anyways though, the next two paragraphs are the most important part. This is the Domination Expansion. No wait, it's Dominion. It's Dominion Expansion, not Domination. Basically, the things that QE meta spawns are the Knights. They literally only take one damage from non-meta ships, it's crazy. But this is why we have Arc Royale meta use her airstrike first, so that she can clear them all out. That was just an unlucky run, where they didn't all get cleared out by the first airstrike. That clip should have helped you figure out my strategy for this entire fight. Pretty much max torpedo damage and max carrier damage. We're saving up our airstrikes until we can destroy all of those knights, and if it's perfectly timed with the radar scan, you can get just barely enough damage to actually beat Queen Elizabeth meta. So let me show you some of the fights. Now we're getting to the good parts. To start the battle, unload all of your torpedoes. I used magnetic torpedoes for my recordings, but now I use the Royal Navy quintuple torpedoes that fire in a straight line, so I prefer those if you can predict them. But for most of this fight, you'll be doing nothing and waiting, just dodging stuff. This barrage that she fires, and it's going to tell you when it fires, is actually not that dangerous. It doesn't deal that much damage. You mostly just have to avoid all the yellow spears she shoots at you, because the yellow spears are actually highly concentrated projectiles, and those can easily shred your low HP cruisers and destroyers. Once you see the knight spawn, I use my Arc Royale airstrike, sometimes wait a second and then use my other airstrikes, or something like this may happen, where you get one con left. It's just unfortunate. But anyways, after that, that's when you want to launch all of your airstrikes and torpedoes at her. That's your best window for damage. Your second window is when you get your airstrikes up again. Sometimes she stays still and takes all of the torpedoes, sometimes she moves out of the way just in time. I honestly haven't figured this out. Overall, this was a really good run. I just needed to wait to use my Shinano and Hakuryu airstrikes. It was extremely unfortunate that one night lived. Otherwise, I definitely would have been able to sink her here. But that's just how it goes. Still, amazing damage. Now, for what you've all been waiting for. This is the fight where I actually managed to beat QE meta. And honestly, I'll say the start until you get your two airstrikes is literally all the same. You just dodge everything. In the meantime, the whole reason I have Shimikaze in the frontmost position and not Helena is because Helena has low evasion. Destroyers have high evasion. And the issue is Helena can actually easily get shredded by those yellow spear attacks because there's so many projectiles in one. So definitely avoid those, of course. But that's why I have the loadout how I do. Shimikaze is important for damage, but she isn't as vital as Helena. That's why I'm okay with her taking a bit more damage. Now you'll notice I actually did something different for this run. I waited until all the knights were destroyed and then launched my airstrikes, but I don't think I saw that I got a radar scan and didn't launch the rest of my airstrikes. Now this is normally really bad, however in this run I got an extremely lucky clutch. So before I launched all of my airstrikes I managed to get another radar scan. 
And that was literally what saved this run. I won just barely. So yeah, I am glad I managed to report this footage because I didn't even realize how I managed to beat the boss. But here we are. I was in disbelief for a little bit, like I couldn't believe I managed to finally beat her after all this time. But here we are. The flash was a screenshot because, you know, I wanted to save this one way or another, even if I didn't turn it into a video. So there we go. I managed to beat Queen Elizabeth meta. By this damage chart alone, I think you should be able to see who clearly carries us. The destroyers were lacking a little bit in this run, but carriers will always well, carry. One quick tip I'll give about the laser attack that she does is I move up to the top left of the screen. This is the best place to dodge, well, half of the lasers, funnily enough. But the other way to dodge lasers is just to go straight through them, you know, in the opposite direction they're going. And through all my experience, another tip I have is to hold off your airstrikes for a second so that you kind of have time for your other ones to catch up and then launch them all so she doesn't move out of the way of the second wave of airstrikes. This is because after all her knights are destroyed, she stays still for six seconds. Airstrikes generally take about four seconds or so to actually hit the target. But here's when the last issue comes in, the last annoying variable, is when you actually destroy her knights, then the six seconds, then however long until, you know, the rest of her abilities, then she stays still for a little bit at the end, but I can never manage to get it right. And if I had better timing, I definitely could have sunk her this battle as well, but I was so close. This next fight is a very convenient clip of what I was just talking about, where if you wait just a second or two to launch all of your airstrikes, you can actually time it perfectly, and boom, everything hits her. It's pretty amazing. You might miss your next wave of airstrikes, but look, she's at 20%. Now, she was at 93% before the two airstrikes. That is insane. That's just the crazy power of Helena's radar scan. And if you get a second radar scan, you are almost guaranteed to win. And now, somehow, I managed to get the timing perfect. This is a perfect clip. As you can see, boom, everything hits her. There was no chance. That was awesome. I am so glad to have finally found a fleet that actually can do this. Since these clips all pretty much look the same, at least the ones where I managed to finally beat her, there's not much more to say. But would you believe me if I said I may have gotten three battles where I beat her in a row but completely forgot to record it? Uh, it did happen, trust me, I literally forgot to record it. But, you know, we have so much footage of this already, it's fine. If any of you liked or found this video useful, consider leaving a like. It would help me out a lot. Maybe even subscribing. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. This is gonna be Enzo from Look Into Gaming, signing out. The only real advantage of the JU-87s is that they are prepared a bit quicker and they launch their torpedoes closer to the target, meaning they'll have a higher chance of hitting it. But I prefer Yusei's because they deal more damage, and you don't have to go through this insane process to craft them. Like, you can't craft any of the precursors. You have to get the base torpedo bomber from a gearbox, which has a low chance. I was very lucky to get one first try. Then you have to go through the 500 steps of crafting every single one. Thankfully, I played so much, I know I have every single resource I need. But still, Ryusei's are infinitely easier to craft, considering you can do it straight from the depot menu, and they take way less resources and, of course, the lower crafting cost. So yeah, I'll stick with my Ryusei's from now on. I've learned my lesson.